Well, now, we don't usually associate huge outdoor music festivals with Shakespeare, but promising to bring Glastonbury to Auckland, Sydney-based actor Francesca Savage and our very own Jesse Lawrence are here to talk about their production of As You Like It. It is part of the Outdoor Summer Shakespeare Festival. Welcome, ladies. Thank Hello. you. Thanks for having us. Lovely to have you here. Let's start with you, Frankie. You've come across the ditch for this role. I have, and I may seem like a ring-in, but actually I have a lot of history in New Zealand, a lot of family. My parents were both Kiwis that were, they're Aussies now, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I have heaps of family here, so I really wanted to do a show that my family could come and, my Kiwi family could come and see. Exciting. Yeah, yeah. No, I want to know, what's the whole Glastonbury link to this, Jessie? <laughs> the whole Glastonbury link? Yeah, yeah. Well, what do we mean when we say I think was, Glastonbury? I think it's like, well, I think it's a stylistic choice that the director has made that when we go from the kind of like the court where we're all restrictive, restrictive and rigorous, you know, and all that kind of stuff, um, we then all of a sudden go to the Forest of Arden, which miraculously turns into the Glastonbury Festival. Uh, it's okay. transformational. So, okay. Yeah, so it's really, you know, um, modern. It's quite contemporary in that way. Yeah. So for people that don't know the story of As You Like It, can you give us a brief outline of it? Yeah. It's, a, it's a big one. It's, a, it's like with all Shakespeare, there's lots of, lots of complicated... Really and deep, deep. Yeah, but yeah. I guess to sum up, it's um, basically about love and friendship and joy, essentially. All the different types of love. Yeah, so we play like sisters, essentially, like a sister bond. And cause. Ca yeah, cuz. Cuz. Um, <laughs> I'm learning the Kiwi language. Yeah, 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 yeah. very Kiwi. Which is actually in the show as well, so thanks, Shakespeare. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's about love and stuff, so um, people fall in love at first sight and um, how they then come to terms with being in a relationship or discovering what it is to be in a relationship and there's lots of thigh slappers and yeah. And, and um, Frankie, you're the lead, Rosalind. Rosalind, yes. I heard that that's one of the longest, most gruelling parts of female complaints. I don't know about gruelling. <laughs> uh, it's not a marathon through the Sahara or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it is Shakespeare's biggest female role. Wow. The, the Hamlet for women. Mm. Uh, however, she's absolutely delightful. Yeah. And what Shakespeare's done with her is she's a woman who's so witty. And whenever she's excited or really emotional, she expresses that through her wit, which is a great joy to play. Mm. So I'm completely inarticulate when I'm really excited or emotional. Same here. <laughs> I've got yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I get this character where I can express with great words, you know, all these wonderful feelings. And she's, yeah, she's very smart, very fun. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a true treat. There's um, always different ways, isn't there, for people to interpret Shakespeare when performing it. So how would you describe your show? Really surprising. Uh, I think that's probably Yeah, good surprising and just like a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> and we're having so much fun, it's bound to be contagious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And music's a big part of the show, Jessie. Yes. How does it work with this production? Well, with this production, we've got like a live DJ set in the middle in our interval no way. with all New Zealand music, which is really great. Yeah, really oh. great. And then we've got contemporary music spattered throughout the the show, which is um and some a good great time. choreo, awesome great dance Lieutenant, numbers, yeah. really? like group dance numbers. Yeah. This is really shifting my thinking of Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah. Well, well Shakespeare's what the not Shakespeare without a jig, do? but it's yeah. a really funky jig. Yeah, because oh. <laughs> people are always like made to for force to like study Shakespeare in schools where it's all like study academic, blah blah yes. blah. But really, like Shakespeare is written to be performed and to be created like fun and amazing, and that's where you find the joy in Shakespeare. So that's what we're getting. And you know, yeah. you go to a good a good performance when you actually suddenly start not listening to the fancy words or the way things are spoken but you're actually getting the whole feel oh. of it yes that's when it clicks isn't it mm. yeah you do that. true yeah. and frankie you've studied at the globe before is that true a couple of years ago yeah i was very fortunate to be part of an international actors fellowship there was 20 of us from around the world um wow. who came together to share how much we love Shakespeare and completely <laughs> geek out over it. It was, it was heaven, yeah. It was, and to perform on the Globe stage, which made so, th so many things about Shakespeare's writing make sense, about how to communicate with the audience um, and this wonderful stage, yeah. Did you get little spine tingles? I cried. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I walked out on the stage and my knees sort of wobbled and my yeah. eyes held up. Yeah, it was pretty special. And you see, you've done um, a Shakespeare outdoor experience <clears throat> before. Four, tell I, us about that. Yes, um, it was a really good time. It was the Tempest. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's something special about being outside right. um, that's under the stars and the moon, and it's all very romantic. You know, we open on Valentine's tomorrow, which is great. Oh, and you're completely at the whim of nature, which is but, so yeah. delightful. Yeah, let's talk about yes. that stars and moon thing, because also, remember, you know, where we are, it could be stars, moon and rain. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but that's all part of the fun, right? You so could be like, completely upstaged by nature at yeah. any point. But you know, a helicopter you know. comes across, and it's like, whoa. <laughs> you know, you're <laughs> in the middle of the show, but you, the road. you 
you, you have to reference it. It's happening around you. Right. you know? But there are times when that uh, you know can work in your favour. You could be talking like using a bird metaphor, and suddenly there's a bird on stage. Oh. Other times, you know, we had a family of ducks walk across the stage <laughs> once I was performing. It was in the middle of a really romantic scene, and and they. They just had to stop because no one was listening to a word. Thanks a lot. Oh my God, this sounds incredible. Yeah. Okay, sweet. I hope we have ducks. Let's love yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring yeah. the ducks here. Yeah. I'm sure something will happen. Don't you yeah. worry about that. I also hear there's a lot of facial warm-ups that you two do. They're going, oh no, why did you say that? Because you know what's going to happen next, don't you? Hopefully, yeah, after okay. the break, we'll get them to do those facial warm-ups for a bit of fun here. Back with Frankie and Jesse in just a minute. We're here with Frankie and Jesse having a good old giggle talking about Shakespeare. Now, we were talking just before the break about some facial warm ups mm -hmm. that you do mm -hmm. for Shakespeare. A great one is imagining that you've got strawberry pips in your teeth and you have to use mm. your tongue to get them out. So you, ah, yeah. Okay. What, mm. is this, what does this actually do? Just you warm it up. Your tongue muscles, so you can hold a lot of tension in yeah. your tongue. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Doesn't look weird. Which is not good. Squish face. Like, yeah. Squish face and then big face. Lions and cat's little... bums. Cat bums. <laughs> <laughs> I can't That's do that. I get my bum. lipstick everywhere. It's got to go everywhere if I try and do that. Oh, you do a great That's cat's a cat bum. bum. Yeah, it's good. Nice. It's quite a terrifying cat's bum. <laughs> Thank you. And You've then, been looking at cat's bums too. And much, then the lion <laughs> is the opposite. You stretch yeah. out, do the lion, cat's bum, oh. lion. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Nailed it. Oh, he's even got the shape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm intense. I'm he's trying to look, channel look, my dramatic really side. You've been doing that really well. You've got it red now. It's always my dream to be on stage, you know. Um, it is. It hasn't worked Trust for me, me. <laughs> but it has worked for you two. Um, what got you into it, Frankie? Right at the start, take me back to when you decided I'm going to be a performer. I actually went and saw a production of Romeo and Juliet. Oh, wow. And I was so moved. I was with my mum and my dad picked us up in the car afterwards and I was inconsolable. I cried all the way home. I knew what I knew how the story ended too. You know, it's the most well-known ending of any story ever. They both die. Spoiler. It's, <laughs> he says it in the opening of the play. And but I so I knew that what happened, but it was how it unfolded that really got me. And so I thought, I want to be able to tell stories like that that have that wow. power and to be told in such a beautiful That's nice. way. And how old were you when that was happening? I think I would have been around 14. Wow. Impressionable age, oh, yeah, too. It's Juliet's age. It's yeah. <laughs> what about you, Jessie? I think I just always kind of, my parents would say I was always a performer. From yeah, when I was a, a, child. Like a prima donna. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think I just, when I was like four years old, I used to sit all my family in, in the lounge and perform Little Miss Muffet, like sat on her tuffet, you know, that thing. Eating her and just over and over yeah. and over. And then I used to wait for them to clap and then run out and then run back in and do it all again. So I think I just kind of always really enjoyed it. I just, I, I get a certain feeling from performing that I don't get from anything else in life. And it's amazing. Yeah. So. And, and what was the first gig where you thought, OK, cool, now I can start, you know, taking this on as a career? Can you remember what that gig was, the turning point, I guess? Um, I would have been in high school... I, I can't remember the turning point because I think it was just always that like, I just want to be doing this. Right. Yeah, so, but in high school I started doing more theatre shows. I did Twelfth Night, Viola, which was amazing. Um, and when I did that, I was like, I love this. And that's when I started looking into drama schools. And so nice you can actually do it and, and you know, be, be making a living from it. Yeah. More, you know, more acting, it's a hard thing to make a living from. Yeah, um, the, tell us a little bit about the English director, Benjamin, or Ben Henson, for the show. He's amazing. Yeah. He's incredible. He's so great. He yeah. brings so much joy into the room. So you could be feeling exhausted and he comes in bursting with <laughs> energy um, and everything is delicious and delightful and playful and so everybody's spirit lifts yeah. immediately and well, everyone throws himself into the work. As like soon as, we, yeah, no, as, like soon as we heard his name, uh, Jesse, our uh, barista, was like, oh, he's amazing. Yeah. So, he is amazing. Yeah. 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 OK, nice, nice, so, nice. OK, so this show here, who do you reckon should come and see it? Is it, you know, for people that perhaps have never seen a Shakespeare play before, will this be the one that they go, OK, cool, I'm into this? It's really it's accessible. Yeah. I mean, and I think, you know, you could bring along... Teenagers would love it. Yeah, kids um, would love this kind of thing as well because it's a comedy. comedy. <laughs> it's so, like, fast-paced and fun and joyous, you know, and with all the dance numbers and stuff. Like, And we're aiming, obviously, to make sure everyone understands everything that's going on. Good, yeah. that's what we want. Yeah, yeah. so kids to, to Shakespearean lovers. And, and lovers, like. lovers of, in general, because we open on Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah, Valentine's Day. So it is a perfect, it's actually a perfect date night. There's a bar there, too. So oh, that helps. Oh, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so what's next for you two? What's next for you, Frankie? I've got more Shakespeare coming up, which is wonderful. I'm going back home to do some Shakespeare in education um, for a wonderful company called Sport for Jove, and we get to, I get to play three different characters um, in three different Shakespeare plays, 90-minute versions, and wow. thousands of school children will come and watch them in a, in a theatre. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Jessie? sharing the love. Yeah, that sounds incredible. And Jessie, what about you? What's next? What's next for me? Go, I'm going to do the show until March and then I'm going to see what happens. <laughs> nice. And that's a good <laughs> actor <laughs> life. That's, that's, that's an actor life. Yeah. Yeah. answer, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> nice work. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks so much Thanks for having, for having, having us. Fun. Yeah. yeah, no, you've really explained this concept brilliantly. Can't wait to see it. And you can go and see it as well as you like it is performed from tomorrow until the 11th of March as part of the Auckland Outdoor Summer Shakespeare Festival. You can check out the website for all the details.